Okay. Uh, certainly for one of our guests on the stage, it's quite obvious your role, but if you would like to just introduce yourself to the audience and tell them what your role was within the film. Hello there, I'm James Sibley and I'm the writer, director and producer of Venerable, which we saw first. Hi uh, guys, thanks very much for coming today. Uh, I'm Sam Creamer and uh, I'm the cinematographer and also co-producer on Venerable today. Hi, I'm Tiggy Bailey and I am the writer and performer and director of Tilly Pops. So, uh, my first question to you guys is, to all three of you, I'm going to start this end and move that way. Where did your story idea come from? Uh, this was a pretty personal story for me. Um, I've had a lot of people in my family suffer from um, dementia, and I'd seen some programs on it, um, which I, I thought were a little bit offensive to the person it focuses on the condition. So I wanted to tell a different story. So I wanted to tell a story for people behind the condition and just do a little slice of life film and focus on the individuals who are, I believe, live lives, uh, loved well, and are to be considered perhaps venerable, which was my idea behind it. And uh, that's where it kind of came from, for me personally. Um, and I'll just kind of piggyback off the back of uh, James's point there, really, as a cinematographer, um, I need an ideas man. Uh, so for this particular uh, film, James was my ideas man. And uh, I think it's a fantastic story and very personal to me as well, as I'm sure it is to many people in the room. Um, so, Tildy Potts was originally a one-woman show for theatre, um, and then we kind of, it, it, all the theatres were closed, so we just kind of got together and made it into a film, and the idea kind of is, it's semi-autobiographical, um, and a, again, kind of similar to you guys, it was like, um, you, you see a lot of films that focus on um, the, the lead kind of being the one that suffers from alcoholism or, or whatever kind of issues. Um, and I was interested in telling a story about the people, maybe the family members who are dealing with those people. Um, did you, in the, in the storytelling, did, did you have any, um, Tiggy, I'm sort of specifically targeting here, did you have anything that kind of inspired you? Because your style is, is kind of different. It's, uh, you know, four three, and it's kind of. Uh, I described this to someone some weeks ago as being something that was kind of ready for BBC Three. Um, what? What? Did you have any uh, anything that kind of tipped you in that direction? What? What was your inspiration of how to shoot it? Um, well, I owe a lot of the kind of <clears throat> cinematography stuff to Oscar, who was my co-director. Um, I know he was a big fan of Edgar Wright, um, that was an influence. Um, I think it was, yeah, I think we, afterwards he said like, why didn't I kind of go for something a little bit more <laughs> simple? Um, but I think he just had uh, he, lots of like creative, like visual ideas in a way that he would, uh, I think because the script was originally a one-woman show, so um, she describes everything that happens, like, you know, my face looks like a shriveled roasted tomato. Um, I think Oscar, in, in reading those kind of similes and metaphors, was, was thinking about how he could then translate that into film. Okay. Um, Sam and James, talk a, bit, a little bit about your casting. Uh, so we cast the fantastic Ingrid Evans and Andrew Norman, and, um, it was quite challenging when casting it because we had some really great individual performances, but in a, uh, well, any kind of programme like this, you kind of have to cast them as a pair. And we, we knew we needed someone to play off Ingrid, who was very strong, very serious. Uh, so we asked the actors to say something interesting about themselves before uh, going into the script so we can see how they talk and just to see a little bit glimpse into their personality. And Andrew stole our hearts a little bit because for his interest, in fact, he said he was from Penge. And immediately, he <laughs> had spat our drinks out. Most people talk about how they enjoy dancing or singing or they know such and such, but his, uh, 
entire interesting fact about him was that he was from Penge and <laughs> delivered it with such gusto, we were immediately uh, infused with him. <laughs> yeah, no, we really were endeared to both uh, Andrew and Ingrid. Um, and, you know, there was a, a, a great deal of discussion between myself and James about uh, the visual style. And uh, I tried to push for a while to a sort of more softer tone than we, we went for in the end. And James rightly said that, um, you know, these characters have lived lives and, you know, they have lines in their face. You know, as a cinematographer, you're kind of trained to soften out all of those things, you know, the lines on people's faces. And um, actually, it was a really important thing to do to make sure that we see that character in, in their face. So uh, that, was, that was part of the process. Okay, so what I'd like to do is I would like to ask our lovely audience if they have some questions, please. Um, hello, and congratulations on both the films. Um, I have a question for Tiggy, just more from a practical filming point of view. How did you do the running scenes? Uh, Especially at night and like, just because, yeah, so what was the setup for that? Yeah, so as I said, we kind of did it in that weird summer of lockdown, so we didn't have any kind of like formal stuff. Um, so basically, Oscar chased me around on an electric skateboard with his um, Canon C3100, I think it is. Um, and yeah, the, the one in the rain and the night time, it was literally a storm um, and it was terrifying. It's got a very expensive camera and it's his whole livelihood. So yeah, that was fun, but we did it. I lived in Penge for 20 years. He's not a bit like anybody who comes from Penge. <laughs> um, they can't be bad if I lived there for 20 years. Absolutely. Um, do you think it's quite obvious in your film that it was a thing about dementia? Because maybe I'm just dumb, but I just thought it was about two old people who've been together for so long. Yeah. Very often, I think even people who've been in long term relationships or people who've suffered a bereavement turn to somebody and forget that they're actually not there. Yeah. So yeah. it's a bit of a revelation for me to hear that it was a, a thing of dementia. And forgive me if I'm obtuse and I missed that message. No, that's absolutely fine. And that's kind of the point of the movie. I wanted to focus on their love and their relationship as a couple. Um, that we, I only wanted to hint at the, uh, her dementia as a kind of almost a side note. I wanted the main point to be about her. Uh, their relationship together, so we hinted at the environmental pieces rather than having Ingrid uh, try and act out the symptoms of dementia. We changed a few things, subtle things uh, like the puzzle pieces that would slowly start disappearing as a kind of metaphor for her deteriorating psyche rather than having Ingrid um, well, acting out the horrible symptoms of dementia because we've all seen the later stages of such. So I just wanted to focus on a kind of slice of life on the main two characters and not highlight the actual condition itself. So it's nice that you, in a way, don't notice that, if that makes sense. And I'll just jump on the back of James's point there as well, and say that Venerable is very much a film, as, it's, as we have described it when we've marketed it to people, is that it's, it's a film about love, it's a film about loss, uh, it's a film about real people. It's not a dementia film. We've never said it was a film about dementia, but within that scope of that story, there is uh, a component of that which is about that particular thing. Uh, so it's very much a story about people and about love. Any other questions, Anna? Oh. Um, Tiki, I think it was really brave of you to do so much of that without makeup. You still look absolutely sensational in it and really young and vulnerable and angelic. Um, it's a question I've wanted, always wanted to know, because. There are lots and lots of actors, top movie people who direct themselves. And I know you had Oscar helping you, but how difficult is it to act and direct yourself? Yeah, it's, um, it's a good question. Um, it is hard. It's really hard to be objective and um, look at your face, not aesthetically. Um, or just, you know, judge whatever it is. There's one shot where I look particularly hideous and that's all I could think about um, so yeah not being vain is is, is hard um, I it's something that I've actually just like become way more interested in doing um, and it's been picked up as a, a feature film and 
Um, I assumed we would get a director in, and then my producer said that we wouldn't. Um, so it's kind of a challenge, but it's, it's, it's quite freeing as well, in a way, um, to own it, not just your performance, but the vision as well. I don't know if I answered your question, sorry. <laughs> That's very good. So, what's going to happen now is Kevin is going to take these lovely people off for Nerdly Live. And uh, we're going to flip our Q&A panel. And uh, can I have Cat and Paul up the front, please? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.